Hey there, welcome to East and West. Let's talk about Kung Fu Yoga. Originally released in January of 2017, this film very quickly became the highest grossing Chinese comedy of all time. Up until it was superseded later on in that year. The film stars Jackie Chan as Jack Chen. No, I am not making that up. A professor of archaeology that specializes in terracotta warriors who gets asked by an attractive Indian professor to help seek out the remains of an Indian kingdom that went missing after a war with China several hundred years ago. After they find the treasure in an ice cave in Tibet, they get ambushed by one of the most prim and posh villains I have seen in a long time, who's trying to get the treasure for himself and leaves them stuck in the ice cave to freeze to death. They escape, and then two weeks later they are in Dubai. Yeah, I'm gonna bring this up now so I don't have to like call back to this later, but the structure of this film is, to put it politely, odd. I mean, the fact that there is a named time skip right in the center of a film is strange in and of itself. That's usually something you say for either the beginning or the end of a film. But more to the point is the fact that both before and after the time skip, each side pretty much feels like its own separate movie that's kind of just been stitched together at the seams. Because after they escape from this ice cave by to be honest, pretty much just walking out of the damn thing. They fly over to Dubai to try and recover one of the artifacts that was taken from the cave that is now being auctioned off. So the fact that we just went from Tibet all the way to Dubai, oh, and India, can't forget about that part, that's also a thing that happens. If that visual change wasn't enough of a reset button, the entire motive has now changed from finding something that was lost to recovering something that you know exactly where it is. On top of that, we also have a visual genre shift from a lot of talking and a lot of close quarter stuff to car chases and fights that involve like 50 different people. If I was told that the first half of this film was meant to be its own thing and the second half was meant to be a sequel and then they just decided to crush them together, that made too much sense, really. Now this film is directed by Stanley Tong, who has a very decent catalog up until this point, only about half of which I've actually personally seen. And so from what I can tell, the best comparison to this film is the one that he made immediately before this, Chinese Zodiac. Mostly because Chinese Zodiac also starred Jackie Chan and had a similar premise of him traveling around the world trying to find ancient artifacts. Actually, now that I think about it, it's almost identical as a premise. Now, in Chinese Zodiac, Tong is only credited as a producer, but it's very clear he had a big impact on the film nonetheless. There's a lot of similarities in the visual style and the camera motions, and even the way the script is written is remarkably similar. Which leads to the problem. I don't actually like Chinese Zodiac. And it wasn't like I actually had any problems with any of the things I just mentioned. The story's fine, it looks decent, but suspension of disbelief is a thing. And when I see Jackie Chan running down a mountainside on a full body roller skate, I'm kind of already up there is what I'm saying. That particular scene happens about 10 minutes into the film and already I thought, okay, you're kind of stretching it right now. Kung Fu Yoga doesn't even wait that long. The first five minutes are a cold open with all the major actors of the film in a historical battle set in ancient India. It is also 100% CGI animated and looks exactly like something you would see out of a Dynasty Warriors game. And it had to be animated because how else could we see something as amazingly powerful as a man playing leapfrog on a horse between war elephants? A scene of great importance. And as I am actually not being too sarcastic when I say that, because this scene pretty much sets up the tone for the rest of the film. Not only is there a lot of CGI in this, like, a lot, but more to the point, Tong has always had a lot of eccentricism in his work, particularly in his comedies. And this scene lets you know right off the bat that it's going to be going full force in this. And then it kind of doesn't. It's really strange. Because despite being classed as an action comedy, the only real comedy aspects of things are in the absurd and the eclectic components of it, which only take up about like a third of the film, but they're very, very distinctly separate from the main film. It's very clear that, okay, now we're in a film, now we're in the eccentric parts. Quite similar to the divide between the first and second halves of the film, there's very, very clear divides among the sections of what the film is aiming for. It's noticeable and if you're like me, it's kind of distracting, but as mentioned, the reason it doesn't really work for me is that I'm not much of a fan of the eclectic stuff. So I'm getting start getting absorbed, and then I'm immediately pulled out, and then I start getting absorbed back in. I don't like that in my films. 
I mean, there are bits of, like, light-hearted jokes and humour every now and then, but that's the same for a lot of action films. There's nothing that actually defines it as a comedy. Basically, there's a big difference with a guy suddenly showing off out of nowhere to try and impress a woman and having everybody sort of look at him funny, and a scene where people throw snowballs at a pack of wolves with a Hello Kitty snowman in the background. Or this scene. Another scratch on him. And aside from it just being Stanley Tong's own personal preferences, part of the reason they probably make it like this is to try and differentiate it from other Indiana Jones type movies. Which incidentally, Indiana Jones is also a film that they reference, and then reference the fact that they're referencing. I love Indiana Jones. Comedy! Because if you remove the CGI scenes and the camera race, again, I am not making that up, darken the grayscale a bit and add in some exorcist-like music, you would actually have a really good thriller here. There's nothing actually wrong with the story being told. I might not find the eccentric stuff particularly entertaining, but if you actually look in between those things, you've got a really decent movie here, and when I watch it, I was concentrating on that stuff, and I was actually really enjoying it. If you remove all the extra stuff, you've still got a relatively well-made, slightly strangely written, and brightly coloured action-adventure film. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Let's talk about the action for a bit. It's great. I mean, it's Jackie Chan. Of course it's great. Even when he makes bad films, he always himself is great at it. He always brings 100%, both physically and comedically, to his fight scenes, and it works just as well here as it does in any of his other films. Although again, speaking personally, I was actually much more impressed by Arif Rahman, who plays the, for lack of a better term here, second in command in the film. I've never seen any of the films he's done previously, but just based on this one, he can actually keep up with Jackie Chan. Not only in his technique, but his comedic timing can basically be matched one for one in these scenes. Which means he doesn't just play well off him, he can also hold down the scenes on his own when he has to. And they're really, really good. I absolutely loved him in this. I really need to check out his other stuff. Everybody else is just... okay. The choreography itself is fine, but the actors themselves, they just can't bring enough physically to it. It's very clear that they're just going through the motions, and it doesn't work as well with anyone else as it does with the two male leads. Speaking of going to the motions, I feel kind of strange bringing this up, but I feel like I have to. There is a lot of English in this film. Why did you get this? This was passed down in my family. Aren't you the greatest archaeologist in China? It's just one of them. But as someone who speaks English natively, it's also very obvious that only about half of the actors in there also have a history of speaking English. A lot of people are alright, but there's also a lot of dialogue that's very, very clearly stilted, and it's slow, and it's, it's again, it's quite clear that the people speaking are trying to speak a language that they're not really comfortable with, and being an English speaker myself, that kind of gets a little bit distracting. I mean, I can't really blame them for it, but it'd be remiss if I didn't bring it up. It does, however, make me question why they felt the need to use that much English in the first place. It doesn't really add anything to the conversation, literally speaking. And if the entire film was just in Chinese, everything would work just fine. So maybe they were trying to market to a Western audience? I don't know. But it's there, and it can be kind of off-putting at times. But if there's any actual real problem with this film, it's to do with the ending. Because it doesn't exist. Let me give you a quick rundown on how the last half hour of this film goes. They find a cave with all a bunch of treasure, again, and then there's talking, talking, really, really badly written talking, it's literally the worst dialogue in the whole film. And then there's fighting, 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 more fighting, Bollywood dance number, end credits. Again, not making this up. Monty Python and the Holy Grail has a more cohesive ending than this film does. I. I just don't understand it. And I'm about 95% sure that the only reason it even exists is because Stanley felt like there wasn't enough comedy in the film, so let's just throw everything in on the end. I mean, I guess it's one way to leave a lasting impression. And finally, the title. How does anything that I have just mentioned come out of a film titled Kung Fu Yoga? Well, the reason it's called that is because throughout the entirety of the film, you have characters that will continually wax philosophical about yoga and kung fu. That is literally the only reason it is called that. Did I mention that Stanley Tong is a little eccentric? 
All in all, barring the stupidity that is the ending, this is still a fun film. It's strange and eccentric, and that is going to turn a lot of people off. But if you're not turned off by it, go right ahead. It's a heck of a ride. Basically, I'm going to say exactly what I said before. If you can look at this scene, and then not dread the thought of watching a film that has this scene in it, you're going to enjoy yourself. Alternatively, you could just think to yourself that this is a Jackie Chan film that isn't inherently all-around awful. Take your pick, whichever one you're okay with. I give this film two pink diamonds and four hyenas. From India. So that was my review of Kung Fu Yoga. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. Till next time.